Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And if I look extra pink today, I did get some sun on my face from this weekend. Um, so I try to cover up most of it, but I feel like there's still a little bit of redness showing through on my forehead. Um, but today's topic actually was suggested by one of you guys. A couple of weeks back, I was suggested this kind of video topic and I'm so excited to talk about it because I find it so interesting on how my candle making has actually changed. So we are going to do basically a compare and contrast video between how I used to make candles and how I make candles now. So I'm gonna do my best to try to go through every little aspect of it, but if there's anything that I missed, please let me know, but let's go ahead and get right on into the video. So way back when I first started making candles, this was back in, I wanna say, I believe it was late of 2019. So I think it was around September of 2019 that I first started really taking candles more seriously and thinking about starting it for a business. And one of the first things that pops up into my head is that I used to actually make candles outside. I used to make candles outside on my balcony. And mind you, this was later on in the year. So even though I'm in California, temperatures were still starting to drop and I would make candles when it was around 50 degrees outside, which is crazy to me now because I really try to keep a good temperature. So I try to make sure that the temperature in my house is anywhere between 70 and 75 degrees, sometimes a little bit, you know, higher 76, 77, just a good range of temperatures just so it's not extreme heat or extreme cold because as I I grew in my candle making knowledge, I realized how important it is to have that regulated temperature control and how it can affect your candles. So thinking about it now on how I used to make them outside in the cold just kind of blows my mind now. The next thing that has changed is the wax that I use. So it's kind of changed. I've done more of a wax blend. So I used to use primarily just soy tin. So it was just 100% soy tin and my candles. I haven't actually changed my jar. So that's one thing that has not changed from when I first started selling candles was I have always used these jars. These are 13.5 ounce Cali jars. I get them from California Candle Supply. They come with the wood lid and the diameter of them is 3.25 inches. But yeah, in the beginning, it was just 100% soy tan wax that I used for my candles. And now I have been doing a custom wax blend. And that blend is a mixture of soy tan, TW30, and a little bit of beeswax. I've been playing around between five to 10% to see how it performs in the candle. And to be honest, you guys, I've been a little hesitant about telling you guys what custom wax blends I'm doing, not because I'm worried about anybody copying me per se, it's more of just, I don't want people to think that that's the ultimate wax blend to use because to be 100% transparent with you guys, if I could get away with only using 100% soy tan in my candles, I would do it in a heartbeat. But because I noticed a difference in the way that it was performing with two wicks in here, I had to make a change. And I will get into the wick changes that I have made in just a second. But if it was up to me, I would just use all soy tan. So I don't want you guys to be thinking like, okay, well, soy tan, TW30, beeswax, like that is the perfect wax blend, not at all. It's just what I've been making work for the containers that I use. Now, when it comes to wicks, in the beginning, I was doing two Eco 2s. Actually, before that, I really tried doing one single wick, which just, it didn't work with this size container with the Soy 10 wax that I was using. I was never able to find a single wick that was able to burn correctly in this container. And then when I tried two Eco 2s, it completely changed the game for me, and I was using that ever since. But what I ended up noticing over time with the two Eco 2s with the Soy 10 wax is that it was burning a little bit too hot and too fast in this size container. So I ended up wicking down to two Eco 1s and testing that out. And even then I had noticed that it was still burning a little bit too fast than what I was wanting. So that's where the custom wax blend comes in. So typically in a lot of different situations, people will change different factors for their candles, so whether or not they're going to change the wick until they get the right wick to work with the size container and the wax they're wanting, 
or they'll change the wax that they're using to work with the container. There's multiple different factors that you can change. For me personally, I wanted to keep my jars. I love these jars. I've been in love with them since the first time I saw them and wanted to use them for my business. So I love them and I wanted to make it work. So that's why I've gone through this process of figuring out a custom wax blend to work. And the beeswax has really helped because it's helped to kind of slow it down a little bit, but it has hasn't overpowered the soy tan enough to take down any of the hot throw. It still has a really good hot throw to it. Um, it was just what I needed to do at the time and still I'm trying to figure it out to make it work with this candle and still make it a really good candle. The next thing that has changed is I actually first started out with these being a 9.5 ounce candle. And recently, I believe it was towards the beginning of this year, I bumped it up to a 10 ounce candle. So this is now a 10 ounce candle. And I basically in the beginning was just going off of what California Candle Supply had recommended for the fill weight to be. And I never thought that I could fill it up anymore. Honestly, I could probably fill it up even more than this, but I'm just so used to this being a 10 ounce candle and having enough room for the lid that I just kind of wanted to bump it up to an even number. So it's been a 10 ounce candle ever since. Something else that has completely changed from the beginning is my temperatures that I use. So just a compare and contrast. When I used to heat up my wax, I used to heat it up to about one between 175 and 180 ish, and then pour in my fragrance oil around, I believe 160, 165 ish. It never was something that came across my mind. To me, that was higher temperatures because I remember hearing people talking about the Alex method, which is working at super low temperatures. So to me, working between 160 and 180 worked at the time. Now what I do is I actually sometimes will bring up my soy 10 wax between 190 and 200 degrees because I know that when I pour that wax into the pouring pitcher, if I don't heat up that pouring pitcher, the temperature is going to continuously drop. And I've learned the importance of making sure that your wax is at a good hot enough temperature when you pour in the fragrance oil so that it binds together properly. So now I aim for between 180 and 190 to pour in the fragrance oil and stir it together. And in the past, I remember waiting to have my wax be at, I believe 160-ish before I poured, even a little bit lower than that. And now I will pour it just as soon as I'm done stirring. So I stir for between 30 and 45 seconds and I will pour immediately after. Even if it's still 175, 180, it doesn't matter. I haven't noticed any differences pouring at a higher temperature um, and my candles still come out really good and I don't even have to heat up my jars. That's actually one thing I've never done. I've never actually heated up my jars before. And something else that I've done differently from the past is that in the past, I actually used 10 to 10.5% fragrance oil in all of my candles because I thought the more the better, I'm just going to do a higher amount of fragrance oil to make sure that I get the best hot throw possible. And I never actually tried to make my candles using a smaller percentage, but recently over the past few months, I've actually taken it down to around 8% and I still get really, really good candles, really great hot throw and I should have been doing it from the beginning I should have tested it out a little bit more but that's definitely something that has changed from the beginning of me starting candle making to now and then the last few things that I can think of off the top of my head is what I use to hold down the wicks so I used to always use these cotter pins and I had a lot of people asking me throughout the time that I've been making candles where I get these and these I get from California Candle Supply and they're really nice to hold the wicks together, especially if you use more than one wick. And now I use these custom wick holders that I got um, from one of my subscribers, Etsy shop. I think he's actually transitioning to his own website right now, but I will have his updated information linked in the description box below because I know that I always get questions about this. And then something else that has changed is the way that I actually make candles. So in the beginning, it was always the double boiler method. I double boiled my candles for the first uh, up until the first few months of me being in business. And then I switched over to Presto Pots. So Presto Pots have been my go-to for the longest time. They've been amazing to use and they're such 
a great step up from the double boiler method. If you're just getting started with your business and you know that you wanna be able to make more than one candle at a time, but you don't need anything huge, a Presto Pot is definitely the way to go. And then now, let me see if I can actually show you guys. Let's see, I'm using big pots like those in the back. I got another one over on the other side too. So that's a digi boil. And now I am um, making a lot of candles at once. And it's so nice to have that heated up with that much wax at a time to know that I don't have to keep refilling it. Um, and that has been a huge change since the beginning. And then the very last thing that I can think of is actually my labels. So I have always used online labels for my labels, but um, in terms of the size and the type of paper that I use, I get a lot of questions about that. So let me show you guys actually this first. So I hope you guys will be able to see this. This is the size label that I used to use. So this is a 2.2 inch by 2.83 or the other way around. I always get it mixed up, but it's one of those. I'll have it linked in the description box below. This is obviously a wax melt sticker um, label that I use, but this was the size that I used to have on my candles and I would have it this way. And then I upgraded to the 2.5 by three inch label size that I use now on my candles. And I have changed up the paper as well. So I used to just use the white gloss paper for either inkjet or laser. So in the past I used to use inkjet um, because that was the only printer I had. It was a Canon inkjet printer. And now I upgraded to my laser printer that I absolutely love. And um, so the paper has has been a little bit different. So I used to use just the white gloss for the inkjet, and now I use the weatherproof polyester for laser. And I'm really hoping I didn't leave anything out. These were the things that I wrote down in my notes of kind of the then versus now and what has actually changed. If there's anything I missed or any further questions on this topic, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Oh, that's something that's changed. It's not candle making related though, but it's okay because it's at the end of the video and I can let you guys know. I used to not do that. I don't know what made me do that. I think I would do this and then it slowly just got further to the camera. <laughs>